Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Sunday morning, the 14th of November, 2021, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we are in Zechariah, chapter number 4. Uh, we have been covering this uh, period of Israel's history extensively with the books of Esther and Daniel and Haggai and now Zechariah, and then also Ezra and Nehemiah. And I won't belabor you with a long, uh, drawn-out recap of anything, but Zechariah, is the prophet along with Haggai telling God's people during the time of the rebuilding of Jer excuse me Jerusalem after the return from Babylonian captivity and we see his workings with his people and here we saw yesterday Joshua the priest is exalted and promised to be used by God to lead the people back to the Lord and now Zerubbabel is going to be mentioned greatly here with Joshua. And so chapters three and four tell us of the two human leaders, but the Lord gets into it further and says, you guys aren't going to do it on your own. You need me and you need my spirit. So let's pray and look at chapter four. Father, we ask your blessing on our study today. Help us to understand what you're trying to teach each, each one of us. We love you today. We're thankful for the Bible and we ask that you'll bless our study in Jesus name. Amen. Zechariah 4, verse number 1. And the angel that talked with me came again. So this is another vision. These are dreams, if you will. And so one after the other, we've seen dreams. Chapter 1 was the dream of the horsemen and the myrtle trees. Chapter 2 was the dream of the horns. Chapter 3 was the dream of the dirty garments and then the clean garments given to Joshua. And now chapter 4, we're going to have two olive trees that drain oil into this lamp. So the angel that talked with me came again and waked me. A man, as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. So here we've got this ornate lamp and it has uh, a bowl in the center on the top and then there are seven, uh, what do they call them? Uh, pipes that go to the seven lamps around the top. Remember, seven is the number of perfection. You often see uh, in w concerning the Lord, the number seven used, seven days of creation, including the rest day, completion, perfection. Uh, there are seven uh, seven spirits the Lord talks about that are his. And so this is representative of the Lord himself. So he is this lamp. Verse three, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, knowest not thou, uh, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord, and he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. All right? So let me just tell you what these things are, and then as we read, we'll start seeing those things. We said already, the lamp is the, uh, is the presence of God, the power of God. The two olive trees represent Joshua and Zerubbabel, the two human leaders during this time. Ezra's chapters 1 through 6, uh, maybe 1 through 5, I think verse chapter 6 too, it's all about Zerubbabel in spite of the book being called Ezra. And of course, Ezra pops up and finishes the book out. But Zerubbabel is used mightily by God, as is Joshua, and we see those names mentioned in Zechariah and in Haggai and Ezra. Uh, they were pivotal characters to the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And he's, he, they are these two trees, and they're feeding oil into this lamp that then has seven lamps amongst it that oversees and, and protects Israel. So the two trees are Zerubbabel and Joshua, and the lamp is the Lord. And the Lord is telling these two men, not by might nor by power. Look, 
you, you know, Zerubbabel, you're not going to get this done through political influence. And Joshua, you're not going to get this done simply through spiritual influence. You need the power of God, not your own power, my power. If you're going to do anything for the Lord with your lifetime, I'm talking to us now, we're going to have to do it through the power of God. I'm not enough to pastor a church, and you're not enough to be an influence for Christ. We need the power of God on our side. We must seek him. We must seek his power. It doesn't get done without him. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. God has to be a part of it. Verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain. And so now the the demonstrative uh, nature of the power that Zerubbabel will have is being given to us. He shall bring forth the headstones thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it, saying the power that God gives to Zerubbabel will be enough to take a mountain and level it to a plain. Verse 8, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. If you remember from the book of Ezra, Zerubbabel comes in, and they kick off the uh, the building. When the foundation is laid, they have their dedication service, where the young people shout and the old people wept. And it was then that the opposition rose up and halted building. And so that's where we are right here. The foundation has been laid, the dedication service has been held, but the building has been halted. And so Zechariah is telling the people, hey, Zerubbabel will finish this temple. And it'll get finished, and it's not that it'll be finished in 100 years. Zerubbabel will finish it. So within his lifetime, he'll get it done. Verse 10, for who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven, those seven being the seven lamps. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. God is aware of everything that's going on on the planet in every corner. He knows. And so that lamp there and those seven lamps that are a part of it, they uh, represent the presence of God and, and God's knowledge of all of man's doings. Verse 11, Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And so Zechariah is asking, so who are these trees? What do they represent? And the angel says they're the anointed ones. There's a Rubable and they are Joshua. All right, there it is. Chapter number four. Interesting book, isn't it? And we see, I'm glad we've done all of these back to back so that we can see how they interweave themselves. All right, that's all I got for you. Happy Sunday morning to you. We have Sunday school at 930. I hope you'll come and see us. Morning service at 1030. Uh, then our evening service starts at seven o'clock. We'd be honored and privileged to have you come and be a part of our services with us. If you're an adult, you'll be in my Sunday school class at 930. If you're a teenager or a young person, then you'll find yourself in one of our uh, other graded Sunday school classes, but we'd be glad to have you. 5458 Fenton Road here in Flint, Michigan. I'll leave you alone with that. We'll see you tomorrow. As always, please like, love, and share the post, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. Have a great Lord's Day.